please stand on your feet as we recite our praise festival that's listed in the bulletin, amen. And I know we say this every Sunday, but I believe it every Sunday. I don't just read the words off the paper, but I truly believe what we are reading, what we're reciting, amen. Amen. If you read, why have we come? We have come to praise the Lord. What has the Lord done? He has done great things for his people. And how shall we give him praise? Like an angel in heaven, we shall sing praises.
will have our prayer by Christian Paschal and followed by our scripture by Karen Roach. Another song by the music ministry will be the hands of our pastor. Amen. 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 This is my story. This is my song. And I will be praising my Savior all the day long. Dear God, we just come to you today, first of all, just to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see a day that was not promised to us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength, God. Thank you, God, for being our hedge of protection when the devil meant for something to happen to us. You continue to keep your arms around us, and we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for being our sunshine. We thank you, Lord, for being our ready to clear out the mess that tries to cloud our lives and our spirits and our bodies. Lord, you said in your word, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So God, we know that there's no choices in that. We have to do each and everything listed in your word. And we just want to let you know, God, that we are here to just say you are worthy. We worship you, we magnify you, we lift you up for we know, God, that there is someone out there that cannot lift of your name vocally, but their spirits are burning for you. And so God, we just ask you to go out into our streets, out into our sick and shut in, just to let them know that you are still God, and beside you there is no other. God, we ask you to go into our hospitals and our nursing homes and, and our, our jail cells, God, because you are still working even behind those prison bars. God, you are doing a mighty thing in our lives, and we just ought to give you the glory. We ask you to bless our leadership. Bless our leadership, God, for this church. That he may continue to drive with the vision that you have given him for your people. So that we may continue to build the kingdom the way that you would have it to be built, God. We can be selfish sometimes. We can be clickish sometimes. We can be giddy sometimes. God, help us remove those selfish, giddy ways so that we may make it all about you. For you are the one and true living God. We ask you to take the farther proceedings of this service in your hands, that everything we do, say, and sing be pleasing in your sight and your sight. We lift you up, God, and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name. We do not be Amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. In this place.
high school in the state, the school that uh, all of me and my children graduated from. I have about 2,800 students there at Riverdale, and, and they were having their um, graduation services on Wednesday night uh, at the Murphy Center at the Middle Tennessee State University. And uh, foolish young folks. Amen. A simple argument that didn't have to be uh, back in the day when they would just square up and settle it if you couldn't talk your way through it, but uh, gunshots at the graduation. 17 year old left dead. Another one left injured. I mean, you see things like that, you hear about it happening in the cities, but when it happens at home, it's a little different. It's a word that you would pray much for family that's grieving the loss of their child. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We never know what life has for us. One him Molly just said, I don't know about tomorrow. Yeah. But I do know who holds tomorrow. Yeah. And I know who holds my hand. So we thank God that he's a hand-holding God. Yeah. Want to share this weekend, this weekend, this weekend is the 101st commemoration of uh, the Wall Street Massacre and the Legacy Fest, which will be convening on the 28th. The Legacy Fest um, will be on Greenwood and, and some of it will be here at in a parking lot in front of the church and so trusted we would be out and, and sharing and celebrating and thanking God when great educators that those who know not their past are destined to repeat it so we want to celebrate and thank God for where he's brought us from and where he's taking us to. Amen. And so with that being said I would like to meet very briefly after service with the trustees couple of other people that will be notified in the library just for just for a few moments we need to meet with you. Amen. Amen. Dr. Myers, you have something you want to share today. Amen. Well, come on down. Amen. Well, good morning, Vernon. Good morning. Good to see everybody today. Uh, well, one of the things I love about the Bible is how much it talks about food. Amen. <laughs> Uh, the, the, you know, God actually commands us to, to feast, and so um, in, in that spirit, uh, my family and I would like to invite the whole church for a cookout at our house um, a week from tomorrow, so that would be Monday, May 30th. come for the whole time or you know whatever fits your schedule uh, we'd love to have you out we'll cook some burgers and hot dogs and chips and, and drinks and things and so just bring yourselves I've got uh, our address and uh, my phone numbers on here um, if you just see us afterwards uh, I'll give you one of these and we would love to have a time to talk to you Megan, you all right with that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've heard it said that you got to be careful what you ask for now. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some of these people eat. I mean, I, I know I have a small appetite, but I've seen it. Amen. But you did do what he said. He said you can come and go. Amen. You can come and go. Amen. No worry. Don't be tarry too long. Amen. <laughs> we are so humbled. Amen. Dr. Myers has been wanting to have his church family over for a while. And they've been very busy with Riley's traveling, soccer, and so forth. And so the timing is now. And we want to say to the four of you all, Amen to my family. We just love you guys. Amen. We just love you guys. And we just so thank you for all you. And uh, people don't have to be nice. If they are nice, they don't have to be nice to you. 
Amen. So in the midst of your Memorial Day festivities, let's take time, amen, to go over to one of the dear families of Fernie and fellowship with them and break bread together. Amen. 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 And he said that would be hamburgers and hot dogs and chips and drinks and things like that. That drinks while the guy there. Yeah, nothing else. Drinks and things. That means the mixers and Amen. Bless you, and we love you guys, and we just look forward uh, to the fellowship. Praise His name. Amen. It's 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 giving time. It's it's giving time. It's, uh, some some of you got excited. Some of you didn't move after this giving time. God has positioned us and blessed us to give. Amen. He's blessed us. He's He's blessed us and we're grateful to be able to give back to him. Amen. Amen. And I've said before, somebody said, you know, I love the Lord so much. I would give him my last dime. But God didn't want your last dime. That belongs to you. He said, just give me one tenth off the top and you won't get to the last. Amen. Yeah. He said, because if you do that, I'll open up the heavens, the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that you won't even have room to receive. So we just bless God in that same spirit. Amen. In that same spirit, we bless God. With every head bowed, every eye closed, God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we lift our voices. We lift our spirits up to you. And so, God, we come now, God, even before the times are paid, even before the seeds are sown, even before the offering is given, God, to thank you, God, for touching the hearts, the minds, the spirit of those who are worshiping and trying. God, we thank you for those who are watching and tuning in on Facebook Live, God, that they might take advantage, God, of social media giving, God. God, we, that they might be willing to sow electronically, God, that they might support where they're being fed, God. And then I pray, God, for all who would hear, God, and ask that there's anyone who has a desire but don't have it to give, God, that you would touch them in a special manner and that you might enlarge their territory. God, we pray now and ask that you would bless this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Brother Fred is going to give us some good walking music, some good giving music, some good walking music, some good giving music. And Sister Deborah Conley and Sister Judy will come and hold the basket as we might come and worship God through our giving. Amen. 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 As these uh, ladies will come to receive God's tithes and our offering, leave it alone, Brother James. You got to come up here. Amen. 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 I know it was fun. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
been.
our Redeemer. My, 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 God, we thank you. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, the Gospel. Matthew chapter 5. If you find it on your electronic devices or on your uh, traditional Bibles, we pause with Sister Virginia Walker as she salutes her late husband on this his birthday. Amen. 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 Great man of God who did so much for so many for the cause of education and Christian education. So his legacy and life lives on. Amen. Matthew chapter 5. I will commence reading at verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, declaring who are blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, when men shall revile you, and, and when folk will persecute you, and, and they'll say all manner of evil against you falsely, when they lie on you for yeah. my sake. Yeah. Rejoice! Hallelujah! Rejoice! And be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Back up, if you would, to verse number seven. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. God's word for God's people. With that verse in mind, I would that you would find a neighbor Amen. Look at somebody. Amen. Look at somebody. Look them in the eye. Repeat out to me, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. This morning, the preacher is going to talk about the ministry of mercy. Amen. The ministry of mercy. find in this biblical narrative is after Jesus had began his earthly ministry he had been baptized by John in the Jordan and the Spirit of God descended and ascended on his shoulder in the form of a dove. God spoke through that Spirit and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Yeah, it was after he had encountered John and told John, that he had need to be baptized of him. John the Baptist replied, I am not worthy. 
so much that you can stoop down and unlatch your shoes. But he told John, suffer it to be so. After the baptism, and after the declaration of him pleasing God, the Bible said the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. It was there while he was in the wilderness that he told Satan that man shall not live by bread alone, but by, out, by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Beloved, it was there when he told Satan, Thou shalt look, uh, worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. It was after the 40 days of being tempted by the devil that he came out and he chose 12 apostles, 12 disciples. He found some who were fishing and some who were farming and, 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 and a physician and, and a tax collector and, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, whose mom said, let one of my sons be on your right and one be on the left. And Jesus said, that's not mine to give. It was that that he chose 12 disciples to prepare them for ministry. Uh, what we must understand in order to be effective in any kind of ministry, you have to be willing, you have to be willing to submit yourself to some teaching and tutoring. Some want to jump up and run out and do it because they say the Lord has called me, but what we must understand that the first call is a call of preparation. Are you with me? As a matter of fact, Paul said 12 years under the feet of Galileo preparing before he launched out in ministry. Uh, it's damaging to the kingdom for folk to go out proclaiming to be this and that, but are unprepared. Uh, Jesus took his 12 disciples to a solitude place. Sometimes you need a sabbatical. Sometimes you need to, to steal away. And, and, and sometimes you need to spend some time in your own personal closet to you and the Lord. Yeah, yeah. See, but Fred, I found out folk like to have so much power in public. Folk like to put on a public show. But I submit to you, Vernon, in order to have power in public, you must have some prayer in private. Right. Are you with me? We must learn how to spend some time with God. I think I want to say it again. Some of us think we have power in public, but you're really powerless because you are not having any prayer in private. But God said, if you worship him in private, you don't have to put on a show. He said, he'll put, he'll put you over a minute because some, he said, do things to be seen of men. They exalt themselves. So here it was. Jesus knew that his ministry, his time on earth would be limited and he knew that there needed to be somebody to carry on the ministry after he had ascended back to heaven. And it was these 12 apostles that he had called and chosen and he understood that they needed to be prepared. So we find here firstly in the book of Matthew when he took them into the mountains. And here we have what theologians call the Sermon on the Mountain. And the Sermons on the Mountain were simply a season, a time where Jesus sat the disciples down to begin to teach them. And we know this today, this particular section of the Sermon on the Mountain as the Beatitudes. Come on, everybody say Beatitude. That's a strange word, Beatitude, Beatitude. But I looked at that word and I dissected that word. Why did he call this the Beatitude? Because it's simply because that's how your attitude ought to be. Are you with me? You ought to be willing to bless those that are poor and to bless those that are mourning, blessing those that are meek. But I've come to understand we like to run over meek folk and we, we got to twist. We think meek folk are weak folk, but I, I beg to differ. I've come to understand you don't have to be a hellraiser to be strong, but meekness is not really weakness, but meekness is often strength under control. You better stop messing with meek folk. Uh, he said, he told them that you, you, you got to be willing to bless humble.
hungry folk, come on, run. I got y'all do good at that one. Bless those that are just pure in heart. You have some folk who are just good for no reason, just good to be good. I mean, just good to folk who ain't good to them. Those are just good without a motive. A lot of folk are good to folk who can do something back for them. But there's some folk are just good, just good, just good, just good. Anybody know any good folk? Yeah, yeah. And not only that, but I thank God for the peacemakers. Uh, we, we have a lot of peace breakers. We have a lot of peace breakers. We have a lot of peace breakers just stir up stuff. No matter what organization they're in, it gets along fine until they get in. No matter what group it is, it's fine until they get in. Uh, no matter what the family gathering is, it's fine until they show up. I wish I had some help in here. You, you got some in your family too. Everything can be going well to that certain hell generator shows up. Uh, Peace breakers, but the Lord said He taught them, Blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who are persecuted for just doing good. Don't you know some folk will not like you just because you're trying to stand for right? Blessed are those that, that, that people talk about and lie on. He said, For they're going to have an exceeding great reward. But today we're going to zero in on verse 7. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain, acquire, they're going to get what they are sowing. They sow mercy, they shall reap mercy. What is mercy? We, we talk about grace and mercy, and grace is undeserved favor. Getting what we don't deserve. On the other hand, mercy is us not getting what we do deserve. Yes. We deserve the wrath of God. We, we deserve the punishment of God. We deserve the judgment of God. But if anybody besides Mays can say, thank God for his mercy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mercy is when mama promised you a whipping and you hurry up and got in bed and, and, and you thought you were fooling her by playing sheep, but she really looked in and she could see you blinking your eyes. She knew you were playing sheep, but in spite of that, she went ahead and walked out the room and shut the door. Can I, can I tell you, love, you really didn't fool her. She was just extending some mercy. Yeah, one of those powerful prayers we can ever pray. Simply, Lord, have, have mercy. Mercy, compassion, and you know, kindness shown toward an offender or an enemy or other person. Uh, uh, mercy is pity and benevolence. Uh, uh, mercy that is this discretionary power that you have to judge somebody, but rather than judging them, you pardon them. Yeah. You, you, rather than punishing them, you forgive them. Yeah. And the reason that's so important is because while Jesus was on the mountain, in the same setting, while he was teaching the disciples, he, he took time to teach them how to pray. You, you do know the disciples' prayer, don't you? Our Father, God in hallowed Some of y'all don't know. <laughs> there it is, right there. Stop right there. Right there. Right there. Mm. Don't you know? Many folk gonna bust hell wide open. <laughs> simply because they pray damnation mm. upon themselves. You better be careful what you repeat. Without understanding it and listening to it. Yep. That prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. It's going to send a lot of folk to hell. Yeah. Because the prayer says, forgive me yeah. of my trespasses. Based upon how I forgive others. Yeah. Forgive me of my debts. Yeah. Based upon how I forgive my debt. Forgive me of my trespasses. Based on it. Now, some of us 
us want the mercy of God. We want God to shower his mercy on us. But we never forgive anybody. I've come to understand some of the good holding this folk in the world. Some of the meanest aliens in the world. Camp out on the pews on Sunday morning. I dare not say the Christians because there's a distinct difference between Christians and church folk. Big difference between Christians and church goers. Because he said many of you will, will say in that day that I prophesied, I, I cast out demons, I, I sang in your name, I prayed and preached in your name, I worshiped in your name, I depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I never, never, never even knew you. And so it is, it's important. Jesus taught them, uh, if you want to in life be forgiven, you must learn how to have acts of kindness and, and give divine favor and blessings and show mercy upon others. Mercy, forgiveness, and indulgence. You know, we, we want everybody to be patient with us, to indulge us, to give us the benefit of the doubt. But our fuse is about this long. When it comes to dealing with everybody else, we want clemency. We want our state white clean. But we don't want to give clemency to anybody else. Fool me once. Shame. Not gonna let the same dog bite me twice. Jesus, the law of Moses said we don't have to forgive folk nothing but seven times and they've already used up themselves. The Lord said, nah, you need to forgive them the same way I'll forgive you. If the repentance is true and sincere, it doesn't matter if it's seven times seven. Aren't you glad the grace supersedes the law? Because all of us used up those seven times long years ago when we were sliding those children we used up the seven times you do remember when we were mumbling on our breath and speaking in tongue back with mama and dad down your nerves and you've been around the playground and you've learned some of them four and five better words you do remember when you refused to share with other children and, and you told Why was a little white lie? That means the big lie was a black lie. <laughs> we used up the little white lies and the big black lies long years ago. So thank God for leniency, tenderness, and mildness. All are the equations that make up mercy. Mercy simply means learning that you care about people. And how much does it cost to care? I wish y'all would help me here. I can tell who don't make it to Bible study because that's what they know I Does it cost to care? No. Yes, it does. Perhaps that's why so many people don't care. Uh-huh, watch this. Don't cost anything to say you care. But the reason why Jesus took time to teach them about mercy because mercy does not come without cost. True caring does not come without cost. Talk is cheap. And so I'm saying, if you ain't saying Remember that mom friend, mom friend laughed. You ain't said a but. Yeah. Yeah. Who did it was that? Yeah. Caring cost. She, she, caring. Caring means you're willing to sacrifice. Uh, it's easy to say, you know, you know, I'm going to pray for you because I care. Somebody comes and my lights are out. But let's pray because I care. You can pray all you want to, but you sit there with pockets of the money that. Caring cost. 
lost. This is an attribute that we need to give each other. Caring really costs. God lets us make decisions in life, but there are consequences both good and bad for our decisions. Adjusting our attitudes towards one another is the first beatitude. You see all these beatitudes that are listed in Mark 7. But the first one that's listed with reciprocity is verse 7. And it says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. What do you mean reciprocity? Which means what goes around comes back around. In other words, he, he, was, he was doing good in all of the beatitudes, but when he got to verse 7, he says, if you don't sow this, you won't reap this. In other words, he said, if you're mean to others, it might not be that same person that's mean to you, but it's coming up again. Yeah, yeah. This is how to live the benefits of a godly life now. An attribute that is only affected in judgment. Mercy, 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 benevolence, the ministry of mercy, blessing, charity, clemency, forgiveness, generosity, goodwill, grace, leniency, pity, sympathy, tolerance are all synonyms of mercy. Can I tell you, beloved, mercy is moved not by notoriety, but mercy is moved by love. Uh, and, and, and I ask you all a question, uh, does, does caring cost? Let, 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 me, let me bring it home. Once we start caring, it starts costing. Are you with me? There's some, there's some of us who have grown children that we still care about. Does it cost? Does it cost? Yeah, how grown they are? Does it, does it still cost? Caring cost. Caring, first one, is the reasoning factor in the ministry of mercy. Caring begins yeah, by declaration, I care. But if you can declare that you care, there should be some manifestation. There should be some work. There should be some, what is faith? Hebrew chapter 11 and the verses 1 says, faith is substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that you can't even see. In other words, it's invisible. But on the other hand, caring is something you can see. Uh, Hebrew 11 and 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Then here it comes, here it comes. Faith without works is dead being alone. In other words, your declaration, your words of caring without works to back it up is dead being by itself. Who was that on the screen? Look, right. <laughs> <laughs> you felt that scared me. <laughs> Thank you, team. <laughs> caring. <laughs> you cannot apply mercy in an ignorant state. Are you with me? You, 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 you have to be intentional about mercy. Are you with me? Mercy is intentional. You, you can't accidentally care. You can't accidentally give mercy. Mercy is intentional. You, you did some investigation to apply the right thing to the right situation. See, because each situation that comes often has a different solution. And, and you can't just have a cure-all that will fit everybody's situation. Because all of us have some uniquely different 
cares, concern, pains, heartaches, and situations, and ups and downs. And I bless God that He teaches us that we have to be intentional when it comes to caring. Every solution needs to be connected to an issue in the ministry of mercy. It will cost you some time to determine the situation. You, you can't just holler out, I'm praying for you, for you, everything gonna be all right. You know, too often time we use it as a cop out, just give it to Jesus and just take it to Jesus and just trust in the Lord. And, and we're supposed to be his ambassadors. We're supposed to be his representatives, but we we we, 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 we say to remember we are in his hands and his feet and his mouthpiece and we want uh, 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 and here it is. This 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 is this is another one. Lord, I need you to stop by the hospital and bless everybody. Lord, I need you to go by the jail. Check up. And, and why do we want to send it out everywhere that we won't go ourselves? See, the indictment was not against the Lord, but against the people of God. He said, I was hungry. You didn't feed me. I was in prison, you wouldn't visit me. I was sick, you didn't come to see about me. Every solution needs to be connected to an issue and it will cost you some time to determine the situation. Yeah, caring cost. Yeah, and everything that costs isn't financial. Sometimes it costs some self-denial. Sometimes it costs some self-sacrifice. The ministry of medicine is not only caring, but everybody say bearing. It's, it, bearing is the responsibility factor. Caring is the reasoning factor. In other words, if you care about somebody, you'll take time to think about their situation. You'll take time to investigate and to evaluate their situation. You won't just throw something out, but you'll look into it to see if you can put them in touch with the right agency, the, the right doctor, the right situation, give them the right recommendation, hook them up with the right people. I, I, you know, I might not know anybody in Tulsa, but I thank God. I know State Senator Judy McIntyre, she's somebody and I, all I have to do is call her name. I, I know Judy that I mess with me because she knows something in high places and, and if she can't do it herself, she doesn't want to put it in touch with you. understand what I'm saying? I, 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 I know Judge Sharon, uh, uh, she, she, she has a gavel and they say she swings with a heavy fist. I might not know somebody, but I know who to send you to. Are you with me? Involves the reasoning factor. Gotta take time to think about it. The ministry of mercy, not only will I care, but I'll bear. It's the responsibility factor. Responsibility. If it's necessary, sometimes God wants you to carry the whole load for somebody else. You do remember the poem, The Footprints in the Sand? Person look back over their life metaphorically and they saw two footprints, two sets of footprints, but got indignant because when times were tough, they only saw one set of footprints and that person began to argue with God and said, I, when, I, when I really needed you, I only saw one set of footprints. And God said, the, whole, the reason why you only saw one set was because then that I was carrying you. I wish I had a witness here. There's somebody here who can look back over your life and you know you didn't make it by yourself. Yeah. You know that that time the Lord was carrying you. Yeah. That time when the person you are helping unable to contribute back. Yeah. And that's what I like about the spirit I found here at Vernon. Even with the feeding ministry. Yeah. A lot of times people will sacrifice for those who can give back to them. Are you with me? A lot of times, people would do for you because they know that you have the means to do back for them. But there's some folk, there's some folk you gotta be willing to sacrifice for and not expect anything in return. There'll be some situations you're willing to give knowing that that individual will perhaps never be able to give back. Matter of fact, they might not ever even know your name. Yeah. But because of who you represent, yeah. you're willing to give. Yeah. yeah, it's bearing, it's bearing, it's bearing. 
It's just being responsible for the decisions you didn't make. Well, see, a lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of times we don't want to help people because we say you want that on yourself. A lot of times, a lot of times, church people, Dr. Andrew, like the part fans. Part fans, I need everybody here to exercise with me today. I need you to point at me. Come on, everybody. Y'all do it when I ain't looking, you might as well do it now. I need everybody. Paul, keep your hand. I need you to point at me. But while you're pointing at me, look at your own hand. You got one finger pointed at me and four pointed back at yourself. Uh-huh. That's what you gotta understand. When you point at somebody else, look at what's pointing back at you. God knew what he was doing when he made this anatomy. He let our fingers serve as a reminder that you can't afford to point at anybody else. Because the same way you point at other folk, you got three times as much coming back at yourself. That's why he said, be careful how you judge others. He said, the same judgment you meet out to others will be led back to you. And so, the ministry of mercy has carried the reasoning factor the ministry of mercy has bearing the responsibility factor. And finally, everybody shout daring. daring. Daring means there's a risk factor. Some may look at you and judge you because of your decision to show mercy to others. You might, matter of fact, matter of fact, there's some folk that will even try to guilt you. I don't know why you keep on fooling with them. I don't know why you keep on giving them. I don't know why you keep on helping them. And, and they say, if I were you, I would have given up on them a long time ago. If I were you, I would have washed my hands of them a long time ago. But I'm thankful today that the God that we serve did not give up on us a long time ago. Can I tell you, learning and I need you to miss it doesn't just cost you. Caring does not just cost you, but it also compensates you. Are you with me? Yes. We talk about serving the Lord will pay off after a while. But I want you to not just on streets paid with gold not just in the sweet by and by yeah. and the fact that I said play the Lord is blessing me right now woke me up this morning started me on my way yes when you care for others when you show mercy to others there is some compensation. And I want you to know the compensation will not come from that individual. But God sees. And God knows. And God will repay. But I have a witness here. You will only get it because you might have helped somebody in the past. You might have showed concern for somebody else. And can I tell you, there's no promise that you will get mercy from that person. That you will get help or you will get recompense or repaid from that person. But can I tell you, if you do it with a pure heart, you will get paid from the Lord. Do I have a witness here? Don't ask for what you ain't willing to give. Did you hear what I said? In the Lord's prayer, the Lord said, you ask me to forgive you of your trespasses. And you ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. But he really said, don't ask for what you're not willing to give. But Lord, mercy is defined as compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone who's unable to do it for themselves. 
is compassion shown towards somebody. When you have the power to punish and harm them, but rather than punishing or harming them, you decide to be nice to them. In this thing called life, we'll all have some type of power. We all have some type of authority. But you know, I've come to understand some people can't stand to be an authority. Do I have a witness here? You create a monster sometimes when you get some sort of power. Some sort of get a little authority and it goes to their head. But I have a witness here. Some folk, when they get a little authority, when they get a little power, they don't even resemble what they used to be. There's some folk used to help when they were down, but when they get up on their feet, get a little power and get a little authority, they become the worst tyrants and tyrants and oppressors that the world has ever seen. But can I tell you, no matter what kind of power or authority, you have in your household, no matter what kind of power or authority you have on your job or in the organization in which you participate in, ultimately there's only one and true God. Ultimately, it's only the power of God over us that really matters. And can I tell you, the power and the authority that we have is really limited. But in your limited, finite power, God does give us the power to have the ministry of mercy. So the next time you have an opportunity to do good for somebody, I dare you to go over above and beyond. The next time you have an opportunity to sow into somebody else's life, I dare you to do what Jesus would do. Because the Bible teaches us if we show mercy, we shall obtain mercy. And I've just experienced it right here learning how some people look down on others. How some people look down on the people that come to our doors seven days a week for feeding. Can I keep it real, y'all? And some folk look at them because their clothes are often disheveled. Some folk look at them strange because many times they're ungroomed and they're unkept and, 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 and think that we're too clean to come in contact with them. But can I tell you, uh, they might look dirty now. But they're really a flower in the eyesight of God. And they might not be blooming right now. And just because you're blooming now, just because you look like the roses and the lilies, the daisies and the daffodils, can I tell you, you better realize that every flower grows through dirt. Do I have a witness here? You might be a flower now. But there was a time when you were covered with dirt. See, can I go home by taking for out of the dirt? Grows every most beautiful blossoming flowers. A little too dirt on you. Somebody wants to dirt on you. But aren't you glad that the dirt didn't bury you? Yeah, but can I tell you, the God that we serve, he uses dirt to fertilize you. He uses dirt to grow you up out and above everything dirty. Have you ever noticed uh, when flowers are blooming? Uh, with these pretty flowers here, uh, the flowers, uh, the sister Ruth and her group are planting on the outside. When somebody come by and see the pretty flowers, uh, the last thing uh, that anybody focuses on is the dirt. So, do I have a witness here? Nobody focuses on the dirt. But everybody is mesmerized by the beauty of the flowers. Yeah, they're so captivated by the beauty of the flowers that they never even notice the dirt. And somebody here ought to testify it was a dirty situation that I was in. Yeah, I was down and out. I was covered with dirt. But God brought me out. God showed mercy and recalled that. Because
because of the ministry of mercy. I'm now looking like the rose of Sharon. I'm now smelling like a rose. I'm now uh, looking like a lily. When, when I needed the ministry of mercy.
social media, on Facebook Live, on YouTube, and right here in Vernon, we offer you Christ today. We offer you Christ. You can accept him. You can receive him as your Lord and Savior. You can come today as a candidate for baptism by Christian experience. You can come to rededicate your life. You can come to recommit your life. You can come for special prayer. Whatever you need today, the Lord has it. Amen. Amen.
Not only for this year, Lord, I got but others who are going through, who don't have a praying family, who don't have a praying church. God, we stand in the gap. We stand in the gap right now, God. In the name of Jesus, do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Fix it, God. Heal, God. Recover, God. Restore, God. God, we are commanding Satan back to the very pits of hell from which he come. God, we're treading on his head right now, God. He has no power. He has no authority. He has no place in her body. But God, we cast him out right now in the name of Jesus. We cast him out in the name of Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Just like you said you would. Fix it, Jesus. Just like you said you would. You can ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the doors will be open. Well, here we are at your altar. Ask and seek and get nothing. But God, we're not going to stop right there. We're going to give you thanks at the same time. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. So we're thanking you in advance. And it is so. And it is so. And it's done in Jesus' name. Well, thank you.
told you last week that I wanted us a soul and to Amen. Where's your mission trip?
I just thank God for you guys, amen. And uh, I just thank God for the spirit of excellence. And as time moves on, we're going to get your more efficient equipment, amen, so you'll be able to do those things that need to be done, amen. 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 Anybody get blessed by the media ministry now, amen. Now, my name, there are some folk here like me who don't see like we used to see. Amen. 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 And so we need it a little larger. Amen. They print a little larger. I ain't hating. Amen. I'm thankful, but amen. amen. Some of us squinting. Amen. amen. Yeah. You all are doing such a wonderful job, and I just bless God. And I want to thank God for. For Dr. Myers, amen, who works behind the scene to help them. Amen. amen. And I thank God for young minds who were born in this electronic age who can do so much more. Amen. 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 And, uh, and we are putting some things in place. We're going to have some computer literacy courses downstairs for folk our age and up, amen, just to refresh the course and some first time course and just, amen, we're not going to stop learning and stop being what God wants us to be, amen, God bless you, again, we thank you for what you, you already done it, of course, so look at that, I knew you could do it, amen, amen, it, it, Man, that's all right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we're about to, we're about to do a fundraiser to get them a record. Yeah, amen. Praise God. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. Can you just put your hands together for the Lord one time? Amen. Shout out to our family and friends on social media who are so faithful, who are joining, and I want you to help us. Our largest audience, our largest congregation is not in uh, this building at 311 North Greenwood, but it's the people all over the country that tune in each week. And so if you're on social media, I need you to start sharing it. Amen. Uh, every Sunday morning, log in and share it at the beginning of our service. Help us get the word out that there's great things happening in Vernon. Amen? Yeah. Do that, do that. Amen. Yeah. God bless you again, trustees. It won't be long. Won't hold you long, but I'll need to see you in the library. Praise his name. Amen. Praise God for whom all blessings flow.